today we have a custom mechanical keyboard build that I'm especially excited about because it's one that I think I'll actually use with some very cool features and the pictures look pretty sick to be honest. Um, so as it says on the box this is a prototype unit so there's still some things that aren't final and I'll point those out. Nice box though. And I'm cutting it real late with this one as this keyboard is currently in group by for like less than a day, 8pm pacific time. So apologies for that, it, it takes me a long time to make these, although a bunch of streamers have already shown it off, so I recommend you check those out if you want more information. Anyway, here it is, the Skog reboot from Percent Studio, and it is looking damn fine. I have the black version, but there's some pretty sweet and unique color options which also include powder coating and e-coating, which is cool. This one, however, is anodized and out of the box I can't see anything wrong with it. And that bottom though. First thing as always, check on the rubber feet, and there's only two feet because of the special adjustable ones which we'll check out later. Alrighty, let's take it apart to have a closer look. Here we have the bottom aluminium piece, and straight away we see these two big circles which kind of look like laptop speakers or something. Um, you don't need to take them out to be able to adjust them, but it does make it easier. So despite looking like it can slide, there's actually two positions, I believe, and how it works is that we have this disc that turns, and on the disc there's a gap to release the actual foot. And you can see on the foot that there's two hooks, so as you turn the disc, those hooks will grab on. However, you do have to tighten it quite a bit to be rigid, um, as we're clamping from one side with not a whole lot of surface area. Therefore, it kind of makes it pretty tough to untighten, and in fact my second foot, I couldn't even turn the disc. Uh, but to be clear, this is a prototype unit, and they did tell me they will work on the mechanism, plus uh, tolerances may have been weird at this time. But yeah, I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to keyboard stuff, because I appreciate things that are different. And it's definitely really cool to see something innovative and in trying to have adjustable metal feet. Um, but what I have here isn't great, plus it's just bare metal on the table, so not sure on this one, but for sure will be improved on in the final version. Back to the bottom, and in the middle we have the Percent Studio logo with some plastic which will of course let some LEDs shine through. And on the right we have our rotary encoder, and this is the included default knob, which is solid as proper alu. To the top assembly now, and this is a three-part construction, so with those screws out we have the top aluminium piece, and it already has the foam gaskets installed. And these are actually friction fit, no adhesive, and I guess they can do this because the grooves go pretty deep as the foam pieces themselves are quite thick, and hopefully should provide give and play room with its compression. Then we have the 1.5mm aluminium plate, FR4 is also a veil, and notice how at the bottom there's some big cuts, and that's not for extra layouts and stuff, but for the Bluetooth module, which is exciting. Um, they also have cutouts for the switch clips, it, it is just a standard 1.5mm plate, but I don't know, they're there. And finally the mid piece with more gaskets all the way around, and of course that plate sandwiches between these two gasketed pieces. Alright, let's build this. Here's the PCB, supports 5 pin MX style switches and has RGB backlighting. More interestingly, we have this thing marked BLE. And going back to that gap in the plate, this is for our Bluetooth. And next to that, we have some switches. As I'm probably going to use this somewhat regularly, I've wanted a silent board for quite a while now, so I want to dampen the stabs. I didn't have any band-aids around, so I tried electrical tape, but it did jack all, so be right back. Been a while since I've band-aid modded, actually. Uh, these fabric ones should soften that bottom out quite a bit, and I'm using Drawx snaps for this. Mm -hmm. 
here's our BLE module, and this just goes straight in. Uh, it's not the most stable thing, but it should be fine. Also included in the package is a silicone dampener which goes in between the plate and PCB. This is optional on whether you want to use it or not though, uh, but it should dampen and potentially tighten the sound and feel, so that's up to you. On the website, they also mention a foam dampener that goes underneath the PCB, uh, but I don't think I got that. And the switches! Big, big thanks to my beloved Kadazzle, you absolute champ. I have Seracos, which are a silent dual cleaner, and of course are based on Zambimon Serica keyset, which by the way is on pre-order at the moment, please consider GMK Serica 2. I also live them with Crytox to a 5 grade 0. Honestly, I uh, probably would have liked something a little thinner, because silents are already quite mushy, so I just did a light application, but in my opinion you gotta, you gotta lube silents to get the best out of them especially in sound. I have the solderable PCB which will offer some layout flexibility including ISO, and the hotswap version has a fixed 7U ANSI layout. Now to the exciting bit, for me at least. Again, this is a prototype unit, so it doesn't have the connection for the recommended Nokia BL5C and BL5J batteries. I was told for now I could use any 50, 30, 40 battery, but I of course don't have any of those lying around, but I know I have some wireless keyboards around. First I tried my old Anpro 2, but that didn't work, so then I opened this brand new Dogod Fusion something. Um, the, the connector thingo isn't even the right size, but I force it together and check that out. And just repeating again, to be clear, this is a prototype, so this is not how it will be. There will be a proper connection for the Nokia style batteries, which will also not be included in the box, but uh, very easy and cheap to acquire. <laughs> Top it off, we have GMK ASCII, designed by Oblotsky. Huge thanks as always to my mate Jono for letting me borrow all these key sets in an effort to keep these boards looking fresh. Also thanks to Nathan for not using ASCII on his GOG. Apologies. And here it is, the stunning SCOG Reboot Custom Mechanical Keyboard. I'm a sucker for things that look different, but not crazy different. And that's just where I'm at. Going through all these boards, you start to appreciate a bit of uniqueness in aesthetics. That being said, for everyone else, this is it's a big purchase starting at 419 USD, more for hot swap and Bluetooth. So obviously aesthetics becomes a more important deciding factor. But I love how this looks. First of all, I'm a big fan of how 10 keyless boards look. They're just classic and timeless in my opinion. And being wind keyless with the blockers just adds that bit more character. The three-part top assembly does present this lip along the top. It also creates, I guess, a seamless side profile. And I love how the cutout is blended in the front and back. Very clean. Uh, but that also gives us somewhere to lift the board. And I love that. Especially for a wireless board, it's perfect. But the aesthetic statement is the bottom. This wavy line design I love this so much, and I don't know, it kind of accentuates that beautiful anno finish, which is a little softer and grainy, but 
The waves gives it some dimension, and with dimension, light and shadows come into play. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think, because I'm in love with it, and I know it won't be for everyone. In the middle, we have our light up logo, another nice touch, and again, not too common. We of course have our adjustable feet. I think it's really, really cool to try something like this. Like, this is a lot of time and effort put in, and for sure would have added to the cost, just like all these other unique bits. But yeah, I, I really appreciate it, and they do look really cool, uh, but hopefully they improve on it because what I have is pretty scuffed, a little wobbly. While I did have issues with adjusting it, that should be fine in the final. I don't think sliding on the desk will be much of an issue, but I'm still not super comfortable with just having the metal on the table. Back to the top, and the other eye catcher is the knob. We don't often see rotary encoders on TKLs because there's not like an obvious spot for a Kiwana blocker, which is the usual go. This does, however, make use of the empty space above the arrow keys, which also has the small LED strip, which is also neat. But yeah, it, it's a small knob, which was definitely the way to go in the space it has, but being small, it is a little difficult to use, it doesn't turn as easy as a big one. Definitely not a one hand use thing, uh, which you can often do with bigger ones in the corner, so I definitely haven't used it that much besides mute by pressing it. Which is unfortunate because personally I love using rotor encoders, you can program them to do whatever. And yes, this keyboard is fully programmable via VIA and QMK. Usually I just use it for volume and mute anyway, but the usability isn't the greatest for me. Bluetooth is an additional $20, and as I've expressed before, I love wireless keyboards, and we don't often get to see them at all in customs, so this got me real excited. The common issues with Bluetooth in customs is how to allow it to communicate through the case. Remember it can't go through solid alloys, so usually you gotta have a window or something. And secondly, battery life issues with QMK being so taxing. So first, they have a separated BLE module daughterboard, which apparently improves signal reception, but they have it situated underneath the spacebar with the massive cutout in the plate, so that's the window for it to communicate. However, it hasn't been the most solid connection for me. I have my PC kinda kind of to the side beneath the table a bit, but it's not far by any means. For the most part, it was fine for typing, but I definitely noticed a difference between wired and wireless. Not all the time, but sometimes it acted up being pretty slow, which wasn't great. Uh, but with a clear line of sight, it was pretty good, so I'm not sure how it'll be, and with different setups. I don't think anyone else even tested it, so we'll have to wait and see, uh, but for now, not amazing. And finally, the typing experience. Let's have a quick listen. I chucked in Serico silent switches, lubed and filmed, so very very quiet, as you would have just heard. If you want to hear it with more conventional switches, there's already a bunch of other people's videos doing that, but I wanted a silent board to use. Finally enough, the downside is that it's difficult for me to, to accurately determine and express how the board feels relative to others because I'm not using like a normal linear where it's easy for me to tell whether it's hard or soft, and that goes for the sound as well. And again, I'm sure you can find all that info from Teha, Apiary, Macmillan, etc. To me, of course the switches are dampened, but I think it has a dampened feel. Remember we had that silicone piece in the middle, and physically we can, we can see that there is a bit of flex and a bit of give, so 
it shouldn't have a harsh bottom out. And it's good to see the thick gaskets give it some breathing space, so they're definitely not compressed too far. Whereas sometimes with thin gaskets or too much compression you lose that softness of foam or whatever material, so a gasket mount board providing it has give should provide a somewhat dampened experience in both feel and sound. But again, I'm not too sure because I'm just not accustomed enough with silent switches and I don't want to get hammered for dishing out wrong information, so my apologies, but from what I've seen and heard though, it's been really good, so there's that. And that's the Skog Reboot Custom Mechanical Keyboard. There's actually quite a lot going on with this board, so much to get through. Aesthetically, it has its own unique look, has a lot of character with that wavy bottom, the light up logo, the feet, the lip on top, the small LED strip, the knob, there's a lot, but I don't think it's too overwhelming. The feet, not great for now. The knob, cool, but I didn't use it too much since it is a little difficult to use, personally. I really appreciate its wireless capabilities. In my experience, the connection hasn't been the greatest, um, but I'll need more time with it to be honest to see how it performs, but just having that option on a high-end custom is awesome. So it really does offer a lot, like when you list things out like that, it's quite a bit more complicated than other boards. Not that it's a bad thing if it isn't. All we need to see is better execution on the final version, but even now it's a lovely, lovely board. I will be using this more often, so sometime in the future I'll mod this aesthetically to truly make it my own.